goal of microbrew is actually quite straightforward. Players are aiming to gain loyal customers and to meet the requirements for any reputation cards. At the end of the game, each customer that is loyal will score you a point and each reputation card where you have performed better than your opponents will also gain you a point. The player with the most points will win the game, ties will be broken by money and if it's still a tie then beer itself will win the game. At the start of the game there will be some thirsty customers to be served and there will also be a selection of recipes to be fulfilled as well. And there will be one public reputation card that both players should be aiming for for the end of the game. At its heart, Microbrew is a worker placement game. What this means is that during the work phase, players will take turns at sending their meeples to the various different actions on the board in order to best accomplish their goals. Now these actions will be explained in detail, but while we have the action board here, I'm going to go through what they do briefly. So in the top left here, we have the mash action, and that allows you to shake the tin and refill any spaces in your copper. We then have two spaces for the brew action, which means that two meeples can go there at the same time. And the brew action allows you to move around tokens in your copper in order to try and match recipes. We then have the bottle action, and this allows you to select a column in your copper and you place that into a bottle to begin the brewing process. We then have the flush action, and that allows you to take any tokens from previously completed recipes and return them to the tin, and it will also allow you to manipulate what's in your hopper to some degree. In the top right corner, we have two break spaces, and these allow you to gain a bit of money, and they also allow you to flip customers so that they are thirsty again. Underneath that, we have the advertise action, and this allows you to take a completed recipe that's not contaminated and spend a little money to advertise it and then gain a customer's loyalty. On the bottom right here, we have the serve, and this allows you to select a completed recipe and then serve it to a customer of your choice. And finally, in the bottom left, we have two spaces for the manage slot, and this allows us to do various things by spending money, which includes taking a worker back, having a look at some new recipes, upgrading our copper, and hiring another worker meeple. When selecting actions in Microbrew, there are a few things that need to be considered. First of all, a player cannot select a meeple and send it to a space that is already occupied by a meeple of their colour. So in other words, this meeple here could not be sent to the mash space because it's already occupied by a meeple that I own. However, I could choose to send my meeple to the advertise space and I would be able to take the advertise action. However, this meeple here, my opponent's meeple, will then be returned to their supply immediately and they will be able to use that on a future turn. Finally, if I for any reason decided to go to a space with the brewmaster who will move round during the course of the game by following these arrows, then I will be able to take the action, but it will give my opponent the ability to take one free brew action immediately, which can obviously help them prepare for bottling another recipe. The mash action will allow a player to refill an empty column in their copper. In order to do this, the player first will take the tin with any tokens in it and give it a good shake. They will then open the tin and without looking, they will start to refill any empty spaces in their copper. And they will do this from bottom to top, left to right. If at any point the tin becomes empty during the mash action, you will then take any discarded malts and hops, add them to the tin, shake it again, and then continue to refill the copper. 
Players can use the brew action to move tokens around in their copper in order to better match any of the available recipes. Now there are a few rules here. First of all, only one token can be selected and that is the only one that can be moved for this action. The other rule is to do with the types of token and it's to do with the colours. So a lighter token can move higher up and a darker token can move lower down when swapping with another token. Green hop tokens can swap with anything so they're very flexible. So say for example the player is trying to match this recipe here. You'll notice there is one light malt and three medium malts. If you look at this column here on the left we almost have a, a perfect match but we need to get an extra dark malt here. By taking the brew action we could swap these two here because this is darker than the malt that it's swapping with so it can move down. So we take our brew action, we swap those tokens there and we can now see that this column in the left in terms of colour and number of tokens matches this recipe perfectly. Now bear in mind that the order in the copper doesn't need to match the order in the recipe but the number and colour of tokens has to be exact for it to be perfect. During this action you are free to move that token as many times as you want. So, for example, we could take this brown token and we could move it down here. We could then swap it with this lighter copper here. And we could then swap it with this medium one here. And the reason that we were able to do that is because it was always swapping with something that was lighter than it. Also, bear in mind that a token can never swap with an empty location. Players can use the bottle action to begin preparing a beer for a customer. In order to do this, the player simply selects a column from their hopper and the recipe, either from their hand or one that is face up on the table, and they then take the tokens off the copper and place them on the recipe that they have selected. They can then begin the fermenting process and once that is complete they will then be able to serve the beer to a customer. One vital mechanic in microbrewery is fermenting beer. During the game, after a player takes an action either by placing a worker or choosing to pass, they will then take the your turn card and pass that to the other player and then all players will get the opportunity to ferment any recipes that they have prepared. And in order to do this, you simply take a token from the beer and you move it off to the side. Now, the placement of the tokens isn't very important, but if a token is selected that does not match what is on the recipe, it is then sat in the corner of the card and it becomes a contaminant. If a malt is selected that does match the recipe, then it is removed and put into the discard. This process is repeated until all tokens have been removed, with any contaminated tokens being left on the card. Once this process is complete, the bottle can then be served to a thirsty customer. The flush action will allow players to replace any contaminated hops in their copper with malt tokens from the tin. The first step involves taking all of the discarded tokens from previously completed recipes and returning them to the tin. The player then has the opportunity to replace any of the hops in their copper with a malt token of their choice. So in this case they can look into the tin. So for example, if we look at this recipe here, we'll notice that we're only one light malt away from matching that exactly. So we could take this hop here and replace it with a light malt there 
in order to match that. We could then go over here and say we could replace this with a dark one in the hope that we might get a mixture of the two in a future recipe. The break action is actually really straightforward. It first of all allows the player to simply get one dollar and add it to their supply and then it allows them to select any previously served non-loyal customers and flip them so that they become thirsty and can be served again. The advertise action can be used to gain a loyal customer providing certain conditions are met. First of all, the player must have a ready and uncontaminated recipe in order to serve a customer. So in this case we have this recipe here and we're going to assume that it's uncontaminated and it's a perfect recipe. The player will then have to spend an amount of money depending on the number of loyal customers they currently have. And the price is $4 per customer. So in this case we started the game with one loyal customer so we would only pay 4 So what we would do then is we would pay our $4 so we'd reduce our 10 to 6 we then would take this recipe here in fact the first thing we would do is we would draw another thirsty customer first of all and then after that we would take our recipe and we would choose to serve it to any available customer now it does not need to match the symbols on the card, it doesn't need to match the preferences or bonuses, you can serve it to anyone and they will instantly become loyal. So in this case we're going to choose to serve it to Munich Dark Lager. This customer becomes loyal and this recipe that we used will be returned to our hand. Be aware that the more loyal customers you have, the more expensive and difficult it becomes to use the advertise action. The serve action allows a player to select a fully fermented recipe and serve it to any thirsty customer that's available. In this case we're going to be serving this customer here with this recipe that is completed. Now there are a few things that can affect the outcome of this action. The first thing you will need to check is how many matches you have in terms of the symbols between the two. So in this case you can see here we were able to match one of the light malts but nothing else matches. So as a result our beer is going to become muddled and we're only going to be able to sell it for a dollar. If we had managed to match more symbols then that would improve the quality of the beer and we would get more money. Now also bear in mind that if you have any contaminated tokens on the beer it will also reduce the quality by one. So in this case even if we were able to match say two or maybe three of the symbols we still would reduce the quality by one to the minimum because of the contamination. Finally you would need to check for any bonuses. So in this case, this customer is quite fond of fiery beers and if you serve them a fiery beer, you will get a bonus $2. This is a fiery beer. So in this case, we're going to get one for the muddled beer plus two for the bonus. So in actual fact, we're going to get three. We're currently on six money, so that would bump us up to nine. And then once the customer has been served, they will flip face down and that means they're no longer thirsty. However, there is one exception to this. If we manage to serve a customer with a perfect beer, i.e. a beer that matches the symbols perfectly and has not been contaminated, then we will not only get the full value, which in this case would be three plus two for the bonus, but we would also take the customer as a loyal customer, getting us closer to winning the game. Also be aware that for the serve action, you're free to select any of your loyal customers, but you will not be able to gain their loyalty as they are already loyal. 
However, if you've got a perfect match, it could earn you a lot of money, which could maybe help you advertise to another customer, or maybe even upgrade your copper or hire another worker. Regardless of the outcome, once a recipe has been served, the player will take the recipe card back to their hand to be used again. Finally, a player can send a worker to the manage action, pay a certain amount of money and select one of the following options. The first option for $1 is overtime and that simply allows you to take any worker on a space back to your player area to be used again for this turn. The second option allows the player to spend $2 to research recipes. For this, the player will take the recipe deck and they will draw the top three cards. Now, they will be able to choose one of the cards and this can go into their hand. They will then select another card and this will be placed face up next to any other recipes that are available for all players. And finally, they will take the third card and they will put that to the bottom of the deck. The third action will allow the player to spend $4 to take one of these copper upgrade tokens and upgrade their copper so that they can use the last column on the right there. And this means that when they take a mash action they will then fill this column and it can be used to fulfill recipes. Finally the last choice allows players to spend $6 to hire the remaining meeple and take that to the play area ready to be used in future turns. Finally, once all players have allocated all their workers to actions and chosen to pass, we then move into the rest phase and we carry out the following steps before preparing for another work phase. The first thing we will do is that each player will gather their workers and return them to their own area. The second step in the cleanup phase will be to find any non-loyal customers that have previously been served and flip them face up to indicate that they are thirsty and that they can be served again in the following turn. After that, another customer will be revealed from the deck face up and they will become another thirsty customer that's available to be served. You will then also flip another recipe card face up and this will be another recipe that is available to be bottled. Finally, the brewmaster will be moved to the next available space on the action board following the arrows and then take the respective action. So. When he moves to the advertise action, you will draw an additional thirsty customer. When he moves to the manage action, you will draw an additional revealed recipe. And finally, if he moves over to the flush action, you will take all the discarded tokens and place them in the tin. But you will not be able to replace hops from the tin. The game will continue through the work and rest phases until either one of two conditions is met. The first condition will be when the last card is drawn from the customer deck. Players will then finish that round and play one full final round before the game will end. The other condition is if all 12 customers become loyal. In that case, the game will end immediately. At the end of the game, players will determine who was victorious by counting the number of loyal customers. In order to do this, players will first of all count the number of loyal customers that were accumulated over the game. They will then check the conditions of any reputation cards that were used in the game, either public ones that were available to everyone, or one of the two private ones that were dealt at the start of the game. There are two types of reputation card. The first type is the nationality cards and players simply count the cumulative total of all nationalities for their loyal customers that match the card. The player with the most will then claim this card as an extra loyalty. If there is no majority, then no one will claim the card. The same is true for ties. 
Finally, the players will then check their two privately dealt reputation cards. And in this case, we have another type here, and this is a recipe card, and players would count up the number of recipes that they had of this type, and the player with the most would then earn this card as another further loyal customer. Now bear in mind that the, from the two that you have, you can only choose to reveal and score one of these. So it might be the case that you've achieved both, or none, or one, but you must select one to reveal and the other remains hidden. Finally, players will check for the tiebreaker if both players have the same number of loyal customers after taking into account the customers and the reputation uh, cards. And if that's the case, then players will check to see who is the most money at the end of the game. The player with the most will win. If players are still tied on money, then Beer itself wins the game.